Hi. In this lecture, I'm going to show uh, neural network capacity in practice. So, in order to do this, we have an extension of the TensorFlow Playground, which uh, we created. And this extension allows us to measure the, the capacity, the maximum capacity, of the net neural network that we are creating here. And at the same time, <coughs> it will also show us for the data that we want to try to uh, separate how much capacity that would require. Now, um, what we do right now is let's start very simple. First of all, I need to give you a warning. Um, the, while, while the demo starts with one layer in the middle, uh, we can totally go, in theory, with zero hidden layers. So why? This is because obviously we have the input layers and if we, if we forego the hidden layer, we can directly just send the input to the output layer, which is in this case one perceptron in the middle, which has two inputs and one bias, giving it a capacity of three bits. And given we have a capacity of three bits, and the capacity required to separate those two is two bits, we can just go ahead and press play, and guess what? Now we have um, a perfect separation, zero percent error. In fact, this particular structure as we said, only requires two bits, so we can we can most likely uh, separate this, for example, just here, press play, and we have the same perfect separation, just with exactly two bits um, of capacity. So now, that's a very simple example. Let's move on to something more interesting. So now this example um, is a, a structure in the middle, which is blue and needs to be separated from the points in the outer uh, part. Obviously, theoretically, a circle would do it, but a circle of obviously requires, a perfect circle requires infinite capacity, so we need to do something uh, uh, less round than that. So, a uh, typical, typical stop sign would do it, kind of like one side, two sides, three side, four side, five side, six sides, so a six-sided uh, structure would do it, and um, six times two dimensions is 12 bits, so why don't we just go ahead. So first of all, let's add some hidden layers, and for fun, um, we'll just uh, basically start with 9 bits to see what happens if we are not at capacity. So if you press play here, um, we'll see it tries to learn as much as it can, and it gets to much better than random, but obviously it doesn't get anywhere near to actually doing that separation. Okay, so as predicted, why don't we add another bit, another neuron, which adds um, three bits for the neuron, um, and uh, uh, one bit for, for that out output, and that makes it four, 13 bits. And then when we do this, we will see that it's, it's starting to work, and it'll take a little bit until it converges. Sometimes you also just have to restart this. Here we go, right? So with the wrong initial conditions, you can sometimes be unlucky because backpropagation is also just an approximation based on assumptions. We will see, however, that with 13 bits, where we're very close to capacity, this doesn't really get stable, right? Um, it'll, it'll take a long time, go back and forth, and the error just goes up and down. So if we want to have this comfortably stable, we would do a little more than the than the 12 bits, for example, 17 bits, and if we start this, boom, right away, it attaches um, to uh, to sort of the inner circle, separating the inner circle perfectly from the outer circle, and when I say perfectly, I mean with a loss of like less than 0.5%, uh, which is like 0.2%. So, um, now, let's go a little further and, and take a look at, at why we sometimes need more capacity than we say here. So for example, um, this is a structure called XOR. Um, we know very well that XOR really only needs uh, 4 bits, but what happens here is that this neural network in particular you know, is a concrete implementation of a neural network, and we will see that if we actually reduce it uh, to you know, let's say even five bits, uh, it'll not work, right? So it's far from being able to do that. So what you do 
is you add again a couple more bits and then it gets closer and closer the more bits you add right? um, so that's getting getting there closer 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 um, and sometimes it can actually also help to just add another layer and and then things work perfectly so again capacity only tells you that if you're below capacity you definitely cannot do it um, and in order to to see the efficiency of neural network you would have to measure the actual neural network now let's go somewhere a lot more complicated which is the structure the structure is uh, two classes that are intertwined in a spiral now we calculated that we need about 320 bits of capacity to actually perfectly uh, separate these uh, these points now let's try to get 320 bits of capacity in order to do that we would have to pretty much max out uh, what we can do in this demo which is we add as many hidden layers as we can and as many neurons in each of the hidden layers as we can and so if we do that we'll see that we end up with about 393 bits of capacity which you know is well be above 320 so we should be able to do it well let's press play and see what happens when we press play we will see that actually it doesn't do it furthermore it's very interesting to see that in the beginning neurons there's some structure here of what's going on but as we go further we'll see especially in the last layer there's pretty much nothing going on and all the weights are very close to zero so what does this mean well this is well explained this is called the data processing inequality what it means is that the second layer depends on the output of the first layer the third on the second and so on and the last layer depends obviously you know on the output of the seven six and so on layer which means that in this process we can we can only lose information um, if you're lucky we keep it but we can never gain information so what happens here is that deep learning is very good when we want to lose information for example when there's a lot of noise like in image data we want to lose information but for learning a complicated structure like the spiral um, a deep layering is not useful so what we need to do now is we need to think about um, how we could actually learn the spiral and so it's kind of funny because we said before deep layering is not useful but why don't we just reduce the layers then right so we reduce the layers here let's say to two layers keep the neurons active and press play again and what we see immediately is that there's more action going on things start to get a bunch better and it it takes it it takes a while but it'll adjust itself to be a lot more aligned to this complicated structure spiral and we see when we look at the test and training loss that we're in the 30s now here's the you know now here's the problem um can we ever get to the to really representing the entire spiral now the answer is of course no because the current neural net capacity is 105 bits and with 105 bits i cannot represent something that is 320 bits of capacity. So we see, however, that it works quite well uh, in the sense that it, it adjusted itself to the spiral with the two layers pretty nicely, so we get about 23% loss. So now, what would we have to do in order to perfectly learn the spiral? Well, obviously, we need to get the capacity up. So we can get the capacity up by deep layering. In this case, we would have to be go we would have to go shallow this means what we would have to do is we would have to go and and sort of uh do the first layer and then the second layer uh have a lot more uh, neurons so unfortunately in our demo we cannot do this because we are limited here uh to the screen capacity but one thing one can do in order to cut down on layers and capacity required in the network is you can add features features are pre-computed and that means they already did some data processing or in other words they already lost some information and we hope that they already lost the right information so that we can actually just put in what's important into the neural network which um, is basically nothing else but sort of manually uh, created layers that just do the right thing so let's do that let's add these features and as we add these features 
uh, we see also, of course, that the network capacity goes up a little bit because there are more connections here. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to show that the network capacity uh, required is reduced by the use of features, which uh, we can just show now by pressing play. As we press play here, we already see that with the same exact architecture that we used before, um, except for the couple extra connections, um, the, the the spiral already goes uh, sort of in a lot lot um, uh, more precise way around and, and it tries to form itself around a lot more precise way. We wait a little bit to see what happens. Um, again, the process is not completely unrandom, but actually right away uh, we see here that we converge to like five percent error in, in training actually below zero. We basically solved. Um, this task of, of doing the spiral just with two layers, in fact only with two layers, and um, these features. So there's a lot more that can be done with this demo and there's a lot more to explore and to calculate um, and obviously also um, we can optimize a little bit by using uh, the tuning of these, of these uh, different strategies here. Um, also, uh, I, I recommend playing around with with the um, uh, signal strengths here as we as we add noise to things. Um, however, I need to stop this video here, and I, I wanna I wanna thank you for listening and just say that this demo is available at tfmeter.icsi.berkeley.edu, and please don't hesitate to send us any feedback. Thank you very much.